Hey folks, welcome. Today we're going to be having fun playing with some particles and optical flow. This is a trick that is very easy to use. We can see we've only got a few nodes in the network. And as you can see, I have a particle system here that's responding to the motion of my incoming regular old RGB camera. So this is a fun effect you can use on installations, for events, or just about anything. Now, optical flow is really the thing that drives this. And if you've never played with optical flow before, never heard of it, don't worry. We're going to talk about it, but I'm going to go ahead and start by deleting my whole network here. Now on my left, I have a little bit of inception going on here because I have my camera feed also feeding into touch designer. And what I'm going to do is open up the palette. And if your palette is closed by default, you can always access it in the dialogues menu and then palette browser. And in the top left area, I want to go down to the tools section. And in the tools section, there's a really great optical flow example component here. So let's go ahead and drag and drop that into our network. Now, when you plug in your camera into the optical flow, what you're going to see are some weird outlines and edges, and they're all kind of green or red or somewhere in between there. Now, what's going on here is the actual math of computing an optical flow don't even worry about understanding the math, to be honest. But what it does is it actually calculates the motion vectors that are happening inside of the image. So it's using the previous frame, the current frame, detecting kind of what edges have changed, and then what direction they've been changed in. And then what it does is it writes that to the red and green channels, because even though we can see and visualize that, really it's all about the data. The red channel and the Y channel are holding the X and Y changes in that motion vector. So this is really cool because you can use this on kind of any just regular old camera feed. So right now I'm using it on my already kind of keyed out. You know, I was a little excited. I got an RTX finally and I was like, let me try out this this keying business. But you could do it with just about anything. There's no need for a green screen or a key. So for example, I could even plug in something with no alpha. And you can see we get those same motion vectors inside of the optical flow showing the changes in movement. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my camera back in here. And optical flow is really cool because it's a tool that you can use in a lot of different simulations. So you'll often see this used with particle systems. You can often see this used with fluid systems. Uh, any of these kind of systems that you've seen in installations where someone's moving and all of a sudden you know, particles or even fluid starts to go in certain directions. A lot of that is based on optical flow inputs. So now, even just dropping in this little component, we have optical flow set up based on our camera. Now, where do you take this next? So whatever kind of input you're going to use is usually going to denote how you can work with the optical flow. So in this case, one really easy thing that we can use is also inside of the palette, which is the particles GPU. And this is a really great GPU accelerated particle system. It has a lot of the same properties and parameters from the particle SOP, but converted into a GPU accelerated version. We'll see here that it has two inputs. One of them is a SOP and one of them is a top. And if we hover over that second top input, we can see that it says in optical flow. Great, you know, we're connecting the dots quickly here. So I wanna grab the output of my optical flow plug it into the second input of my particles GPU. And even if I start to look a little bit now, and I start to wave my arms a little bit, we can see a little bit of that force affecting what's happening inside there. Now it's not a lot, and to be honest, it might be a little bit too subtle for most use cases. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my palette and we can start editing some of the parameters here. Now, one nice thing we can also do just as a kind of visualization of what's actually going on, is that we can composite the output from our particle system with our camera feed. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a composite top and I'm going to plug in the particles GPU and my NDI video input here. Now by default, it's gonna be set to operation multiply. So I'll set it to operation over and then you can decide if you want the camera underneath or on top. I'll go on top in this case, just because it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So we can see that, you know, if, if I move very quickly, we're getting a little bit of motion happening, but really not as much to, so that it's, it's not that fun. It's not that fun yet. 
So let's go ahead and one of the things that you're going to learn about dealing with optical flow is where you want to actually create some of that more force and strength. So one option is actually on the optical flow comp itself. We have a force parameter. So we can go ahead and turn that up higher to number two. Now all of a sudden we can already see a lot more force is being generated in those motion vectors. Those motion vectors are, are bigger now, even with the same amount of movement as before. And now it's a lot, actually let me do it with this hand. And now it's a lot easier for me to interact with those particles. Now in most cases, most of the systems that you use as well will have their own ability to multiply that input force of the optical flow. And by all means, let me tell you right now, optical flow takes some tuning in, takes some dialing in. Once you get it set up and you have your camera, once you have your content going in, this is a normal process where you're going to be playing with some of the forces, you're going to be playing with your simulation, just to get that right feel for the context, the environment, and everything happening on screen. So in this case, I can go to my particles GPU, and if you've never worked with this, don't worry. It's very easy to use. So we have a particles page of parameters, and a lot of these are going to look very similar to what you've seen before on a particle SOP. So we can increase the particle count here or decrease it. We've got the lifetime, the variance of the lifetime, the min and max size of the particles, all those great kind of things that we're used to. On the forces page, we also have very similar forces from a particle SOP. So using things like external forces, winds, turbulence, all that kind of good stuff. And what we want is this input magnitude and input size remap. Now in this case, we don't have to worry too much about the input size remap, and we can actually just focus on the input magnitude. Now this is a parameter you have to be careful of, because I highly suggest moving it in very small increments, because if you move it way too far too fast, everything goes crazy. So in this case, we can see it's 0.01 right now, so I'm just going to slowly start to turn that up to maybe 0.1. Now you can already see the <laughs> when I move my head even slightly, we're getting a lot of motion from the particles. And if I move, uh, let's see my arm here. Whew, look at that. We're, we're, now, we're, now we're cooking with gas. Now this may very well be too much. And that's why I was saying you got to be careful with this slider. Even just increasing it to 0.1 makes it a pretty extreme effect. So I'm going to drop it down just a tiny bit here. But now you can see we have a really nice, easy to use, in only a few nodes, created this really interactive particle system. Now, if you've never worked with particle GPU before as well, a couple nice tricks. On the render page of the parameters, this is where you can set your output resolution. So in this case, just by default, it's 1287.20. And that means the texture coming out of the particles GPU is also going to be 1287.20. The texture area is where you can assign the look of these particles. So for example, this is the default leaf kind of preset. You can see we've got a square preset, and this is really nice for development because you can just very quickly and easily see all of the different particles flying around, what they're doing, without worrying about too much the texture. You can also set them to circle if you want. Circle's a nice one. You can set them to snow, or by all means, set it to custom, and then put a custom texture reference here. So you could take a movie file in. And let's add that to our particle texture map. Now we've got a particle system of bananas. Who would have thunk it? Now, one other thing that's very useful here is the face camera button. Because in some cases, maybe you just want these orthographic planes, these kind of billboards. You don't really want all this crazy rotation that we see on each one of the planes. Face camera is a great button to hit because then all of a sudden, all of your particles are facing forwards. And you can see if we reassign our banana. We got too many bananas in the house. Aside from that, Particles GPU also has a nice preset menu where maybe you can lock in certain settings. So whether you set the number of particles, lifetime, all the different kinds of forces, then what you can do is give it a preset name. Let's call this preset one. So then you can go ahead and make as many presets as you want with different looks and different effects and actually blend between them using this recall and blend time. Now, like I said, one of the really great things about this optical flow is how easy it is to set up, but also how versatile it is with different kinds of inputs. So as I was saying, right now I have you know, my keying turned on, but if I go into my NVIDIA broadcast app, turn off my background removal just temporarily, 
let's rearrange our composite here so that we can see our particles. This effect even works without any keying or background removal, just because it's actually working on the differences between the frames. So this can be something you can use with even just a regular old webcam on any kind of hardware, works well with connect depth maps, works well with point clouds, very versatile, very easy to use. So with that said, I hope this gives you an easy, cool technique that you can put in your back pocket and use for any of your projects. Enjoy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.